The Decline of the Qin Dynasty. In this section, you'll learn about the decline of the Qing Dynasty in China. As the Qing Dynasty declined, some Chinese leaders pushed for reforms, but others were resistant to change. Causes of Decline In 1800, the Qing Dynasty was at the height of its power. During the next hundred years, however, it declined and collapsed. One important reason for the decline was external pressure from Westerners but internal problems also played a role in its decline. The Qing Dynasty began its, to have problems with corruption, peasant unrest, and incompetence. Population growth made things worse. By 1900, there were 400 million people in China. Population growth created a serious food shortage, and many people died of hunger. The Opium War By 1800, Europeans had been in contact with China for more than 200 years. But European merchants were restricted to a small trading post at Canton. The British did not like this agreement. The British also had a trade imbalance with China. Britain imported tea, silk, and porcelain from the Chinese and sent Indian cotton to China to pay for these imports. But the cotton did not cover all the imports, and British had to pay for more and more of the imports with silver. To improve their trade balance, the British began to trade opium with the Chinese. Opium is a highly addictive drug that was grown in northern India. The Chinese government had already seen how dangerous opium was and had made the opium trade illegal. They asked the British government to stop the opium trade, but the British refused. The Chinese government then blockaded the foreign area in Gangzhou so that they could seize the opium before it came into the country. The British responded with force which started the First Opium War from 1839 to 1842. The Chinese were no match for the British. British warships destroyed Chinese forts and sailed up the Changjiang or Yangtze River. The Qing Dynasty decided to make peace with the British. In the Treaty of Nanjing in 1842, the Chinese agreed to open five coastal ports to British trade. In these ports, Europeans lived in their own sections and were subject to their own laws, not to Chinese laws. This practice is known as extraterritoriality. The Chinese also agreed to limit taxes on imported British goods and to pay for the costs of the war. China also gave the island of Hong Kong to the British. Nothing was said in the treaty about the opium trade. The Taiping Rebellion The Chinese government was unable to deal with the economic problems at the time. This led to a peasant revolt, known as the Taiping Rebellion, 1850-1864. Hong Ziwang, a Christian convert, led it. He believed that God had given him a, message, a mission to destroy the Qing dynasty. He was joined by many peasants and captured the town of Yong, Yonggang. He then proclaimed a new dynasty, the Heavenly Kingdom of Great Peace, or Taiping Tiangao. The Taiping Rebellion had several goals. These goals included giving land to all peasants and treating women as equals of men. People were also required to give up their private possessions. Money, food, and clothing would be shared equally by all. Hong outlawed alcohol and tobacco and the practice of binding women's feet. In March 1853, the rebels seized Nanjing and killed 25,000 people. The revolt continued for 10 years more, but gradually began to fall apart. Europeans came to the aid of the Qing dynasty. In 1864, Chinese forces recaptured Nanjing and destroyed the rebel forces. By the end of the rebellion, 20 million people had been killed. One reason for the Qing Dynasty 
one reason that the Qing dynasty was unable to deal effectively with these internal problems was its struggle with the Western powers. In 1856, Great Britain and France began a series of attacks against China, the Second Opium War. They seized the capital, Beijing, in 1860. The Chinese government then agreed to legalize the opium trade and open new ports to foreign trade. They also gave the peninsula of Kowloon, Kowloon to Great Britain. Efforts at Reform By the late 1870s, the Qing Dynasty was in decline. Government troops had relied on the armies of regional warlords to help fight the Taiping Rebellion. To pay their armies, warlords had collected taxes from local people. After the rebellion was over, many warlords continued to collect taxes for their own use. The Qing Dynasty finally began to listen to reformers. The reformers wanted a new policy that they called self-strengthening. This means that China should adopt Western technology while keeping Confucian values and institutions. This became the basis for China's foreign and domestic policy for the next 25 years. Factories were built to produce modern weapons and ships. Railroads were also built. But the traditional Chinese bureaucracy was retained, and civil service examinations were still used to select government officials. The Advance of Imperialism Russia took advantage of the Qing Dynasty's weakness and forced China to give up territories north of the Amur River in Siberia. In Tibet, Russia and Great Britain struggled for control. This allowed Tibet to become free from Chinese influence. European countries began to create spheres of influence in China. These were areas where the imperial powers had exclusive trading rights. After the Taiping Rebellion, Warlords began to negotiate directly with foreign nations. In return for money, the warlords gave these nations exclusive trading rights or railroad building or mining privileges. Britain, France, Germany, Russia, and Japan all established spheres of influence in China. In 1894, China went to war with Japan over Japanese involvement in Korea. The Chinese were defeated. Japan demanded and received the island of Taiwan and the Laodong Peninsula. But European powers forced Japan to give the Laodong Peninsula back to China. In 1897, two German missionaries in China were murdered. Germany used this pretext to demand territories in the Shandong Peninsula. China gave these territories to Germany. As a result, other European nations began to make new claims on Chinese territory. In the spring of 1898, the young emperor Guangzhou started a reform program based on changes in Japan. During the following weeks, known as the Hundred Days of Reform, he established edicts calling for major political, administrative, and educational reforms. Many conservatives opposed these reforms. The emperor's aunt, Empress Dowager Qi Zi, also opposed the reforms. With the aid of the imperial army, she was able to imprison the emperor and end his reform efforts. Opening the Door to China Great Britain and the United States became afraid that other nations would overrun China if the Chinese government collapsed. In 1899, U.S. Secretary of State John Hay presented a proposal that ensured equal access to the Chinese market for all nations. He also preserved 
the unity of the Chinese Empire. When none of the other governments opposed the idea, He proclaimed that all major nations had agreed that China should have an open-door policy. The open-door policy did not end the system of spheres of influence, but it did reduce the limits on foreign imports that had been imposed within each sphere. The policy also lessened fears in Britain, France, Germany, and Russia that other powers would take advantage of China's weakness and try to dominate the Chinese market. The Boxer Rebellion The Open Door Policy did not stop the Boxer Rebellion. Boxer was the popular name for members of a secret society called the Society of the Harmonious Fists. The Boxers were upset by the foreign takeover of Chinese lands. Their slogan was, Destroy the Foreigner. They especially disliked Christian missionaries and Chinese converts to Christianity. At the beginning of 1900, boxers reformed the countryside and killed missionaries and Chinese Christians. Their victims also included foreign businessmen and even the German envoy to Beijing. In response to the killings, an allied army of 20,000 British, French, German, Russian, American, and Chi Japanese troops attacked Beijing in August 1900. The army restored order and demanded more concessions from the Chinese government. The Chinese government was forced to pay a heavy indemnity, or payment for damages, to the nations that had crushed the rebellion.